Numerical Computation, Chapter 8, Video Number 4. We now look at nonlinear least squares method. We will take um, two examples. The first example of nonlinear least square method is um, what we call quasi linear. That means after some variable change, some manipulation, we can change the problem into a linear problem. So consider now we have a data set, x, k, y, k, and we want to fit in with the function that is um, y equals to a times b to the power x. So this means we, no we would like to find the coefficients a and b such that this function y of x would best fit the data. Notice now in the function a times b to the power of x, the parameters a and b, they enter the function in a nonlinear way. b is to the power of x and a is multiplied by it. So before we proceed, we would like to um, do some manipulation and change this in some way that a and b enters in the function in a linear way. So if we take the natural log on both sides and we see that now we have the new relation which is equivalent to the old one that is natural log of y equals to log of a plus x times log of b. Now we see if we shall call the first term here to be my s and we call the ln of a to be my a bar and the ln of b to be my b bar. Then the function s depends on a bar and b bar in a linear way. We see that we would have a linear regression. Okay, so um, now we have a new problem. So starting from the data x, k, y, k, I can generate the data x, k, s, k where the s k's are simply equal to natural log of y k for all k. And for this data set here, I will do the linear regression. So this we already know how to do. We know it's a linear least square method, and we can apply what we have learned about linear methods to solve, and we would find the coefficients a bar and b bar. And once the a bar and b bars are found, we can go back and recover the a and b for the um, nonlinear problem using just the relation, the inverse relation. So a will equal to exponential of a bar, and b will equal to exponential of b bar. Okay. So this is a kind of a least square method to um, solve the original problem. So I would like to mention that. Um, one has to be a little bit careful here because if you do this manipulation and you solve this linear least square method, your arrow is defined as the least square arrow for sk and the s evaluated at xk. Okay? And then for the original problem, if you really want the least square approximation for the original problem, then you will have to minimize the arrow between the yk here and the y at xk using this expression. Now that arrow is different from the arrow that we use down here. So be careful, you are actually solving a different problem. But it gives you a minimum in a different sense, and it is a minimum. Okay, our second example here is a truly nonlinear problem. So, again, given the data, x, k, y, k, I want to fit in the following function. So the function is y x equal to a x times sine b x. So just to motivate a little bit of this discussion, um, can you think of um, any application of this function we are trying to fit in? So if you recall what you have learned in your 200 differential equation course, where you solve um, second-order differential equations 
and with a source turn on the right hand side, something we refer to as forced vibration without damping. When the frequency of your force matches the system frequency, then your system will undergo something called resonance, where it oscillates with certain frequency and at the same time the amplitude of the oscillation grows linearly in time. So you see the function we have here is exactly an oscillation, if you think x is time, and the amplitude that grows linearly. Okay, so you could be measuring the data of some mechanical structure that's undergoing a resonance, and then you measured certain points at certain time, then you want to understand what are the two parameters A and B in this vibration. Okay, so um, in general, these um, linear functions, there is not always a method or a variable change that can change it into a linear problem. Okay. So we just say we cannot find any, and then we're going to handle it as a truly nonlinear one. Okay, so here's again the comment. That's a solution with resonance. Okay, now we define the arrow. So the arrow per side, depending on AB, is defined as the square of the arrow at every point and summed over. So let, let's plug in the expression for yx, which is ax sine bx, put x into xk, and then minus yk square summed up. So that will be my arrow function. So at the minimum, we will know that the partial derivative of the psi with respect to a and b shall both be zero. That has to be satisfied. So if we differentiate this expression in a, what do we get? We, by chain rule, we get two times this expression. And then I have to differentiate this expression in a, treating everything else as constants, which means I will just have this turn in front of a, xk times sine bxk. And the partial derivative of psi with respect to b, whoops, that's a typo, that shall be partial derivative with respect to b. Okay, so and the chain rule says that the first part is the same, and then you should be multiplied by differentiating this expression in b, thinking everything else a constant. So yk does not contribute anything, and and this term will give me a axk times differentiate sine, I get cosine bxk. And then I still have to apply chain rule one more time, I will have to differentiate bxk in b, which gives me an xk. We see that now we have a 2 by 2 system of nonlinear equations to solve for a and b. So we know in general there is no um, exact method that one can solve um, nonlinear systems. A possible way would be to use a um, Newton's method for systems to find a root. Okay, so this we um, haven't talked about, um, but there are some um, parts in my lecture notes that include this part, and you might take a look if you're interested in how to carry that out. And one comment on that would be, theoretically, the roots might not be unique. There might be no roots at all, or there might be one, or there might be multiple of them, or even infinitely many of them. And second comment will be, if you use the Newton's method and find a root, you are not guaranteed that this is a minimum, because all you are finding is a critical point. So it could be a local minimum, and it could be a maximum, and it could be a settle point as well. So you have to run some additional tests, possibly some forms of second derivative tests, to figure out exactly if this is a minimum or maximum. Okay, so the conclusion would be nonlinear problems is a lot harder, much more complicated. Okay, so that's all for this, and hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.